Efficient movement originates from good posture. That state of musculoskeletal alignment where the muscles, the nerves, the joints, and everything associated works efficiently. And so a partial assessment provides that foundation, it's kind of a starting point where we subscribe to the premise that we need to straighten the body before we strengthen it. Because if we just start training the body or training the body to move, and someone has partial compensations, we know that they're not gonna move efficiently and all we might be doing is exacerbating some existing conditions which might further increase some pain and discomfort that they live with. So static partial assessment is a very valuable tool because what it does, it gives us a snapshot of possible muscle imbalances and how these muscle imbalances will affect the particular joint and subsequent joints. It also gives us some indication of the potential for dysfunctional movement and thirdly, what it also does, it also gives us some feedback as whether there might be some altered neuromuscular control and coordination. When we're looking at the posture, we should really focus in on three key areas. The first would be the feet. Remember we discussed that how the foot's position in supination or pronation are going to have a big impact on the entire kinetic chain. So really focus your attention there initially. Because if there's one thing that you can really do to help your client's posture, is to help them with their ankle and foot position. The second thing we want to look at is going into the pelvis. Is it in an anterior or a posterior tilt? Now we discussed some tools that you could use to help identify that, but it is difficult to do. So cue back down to the knees and use that as a guide to help you identify the tilting of the pelvis. And the third area takes us back up into the upper extremity where we're looking at the thoracic spine and the scapula. Are they in a kephotic position? Are they in a protracted scapular position? And so we want to look at those areas because that's a very common deviation and we want to sort of pinpoint that too. The next thing we need to think about is the sequence with which we do all our assessments. Naturally, we start with our static partial assessment. And from there, we can conduct some muscle length testing. And then from there, we need to determine, are these deviations correctable? And movement screens are going to come into that too. And then when we start thinking about our restorative exercise program, we've got to think about the strategies to strengthen muscles and to stretch muscles. But we also need to think about the coaching cues that you talked about, Pete. Things such as the hands on the hips, but other things we can talk about is keeping the, the chest bone up high, you know, contracting your abdominals. Those types of coaching cues that your client can take with them in their activities of daily living.